What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be painting a turbine engine and, and I'm going to be using one of the perspective grids um, uh, the box one to be more specific and if you want to try those, they are in my gum road so it will be uh, really useful um, if you wanna do something similar, it will be very useful to have one of these uh, it's very simple, it's very straightforward, it's just a cube with um, a lot of vertical and horizontal lines and you can use that at your advantage to draw things in perspective. In this case, I'm going to use this to make a turbine engine, as you can see, a bit of sci-fi looking and I'm basically just sketching everything up um, and I'm using the vertical lines and horizontal lines, quote unquote horizontal, um, more of like the perspective ones um, as a guide to make the ones that I'm that I have to. It's kind of um, uh, very simple actually. I'm not complicating it too much with vanishing points. Obviously, obviously it has one, but it's not like I'm really like thinking too much about it. It's just the, a really easy way to attack this kind of um, problems. Um, I just figured some of some people could um, take advantage of this kind of uh, uh, grid and I just put them on my gumbro. If you guys are interested, there's a link in the description. So now I'm trying to get a, like this kind of idea of a turbine engine um, that I'm thinking for my project and I, I'm feeling like I needed to sketch, I needed to to make it, um, the design in drawing and in painting. I could have done this on 3D, I feel like with assets and stuff, but as I said before in other videos, I'm trying to get back to this like pure painting kind of approach on my own projects, just to see what it takes me in terms of like creativity and i feel like this was a good way to to kind of continue with this approach i've been doing some 3d stuff uh, and i've been doing some painting stuff but i want to continue with the painting style um, just because i like it uh the look of it and i'm doing this kind of like um very um a straightforward kind of way. I'm not overthinking too much about it. I'm trying to be as open as possible with the shapes that I'm creating on the spot and not to think too much, overthink too much about the design. Right now I'm adding some color to it, but you can you can see right away that I'm trying to figure out the lighting at the same time. The parts that I think it will have more light, I'm painting them lighter, and the parts that I feel like it will have it will be more dark it will obviously be darker tones. Sorry if there's a noise in the background, there's like a lot of wind outside, so it could be a bit of annoying. Um, so I'm trying to do all of those things at the same time, like thinking about the lighting and thinking about the color. So as you can see, the the things that are pointing up and kind of towards the camera are, are lighter and the ones that, I, that, I don't, that don't are darker or if it's something that it's on like on the inside of it. Now that I have all that information in, I can just take with the eyedropper and start painting everything using the same colors that I already have there and clean things up a little. I'm not going to get this to a hyper detailed level of things, but I feel like um, I need to get it to a good enough level of detail in order to be usable later, right? So I'm trying to be um, as organized as possible, trying to <laughs> go from top to bottom, but eventually you will see me jumping around uh, on the image. It's not like I'm going to just finish this part first and then this other part. But I'm, I do try to go from some kind of top to bottom <laughs> kind of approach. Um, but I can jump from time to time to another part that I feel like I've forgotten completely and, and I need to give some attention to that part at, at that point or something. So, <clears throat> yeah, the then later I will start adding like scratches and things like, like that. But at this point, 
what I really need is to make sure that my lighting values and dark values are on the spot and like refining those shapes that I feel like they're not so good. Like some of these areas that you see me adding lines here and there is because I feel like they could use a little bit more detail or they could look better. So it's like I'm constantly trying to improve the whole thing. Um, especially because this is the front of, of the thing. So being the front, it should have, I feel like it should have the most detail and be the most, um, how you say that, attention grabbing kind of a uh, structure. And because this is completely made up in my mind, like the, the, the sci-fi aspect of it, it's kind of like some, some people could feel like this is just nonsense detail and like it doesn't have any real realistic approach to it on terms of design. But I, I feel like um, as long as it looks pretty cool to me, it has some validity and it, it's, kind of, it's like good enough for me, you know, like I want it to look this way, like very intricate, kind of um, futuristic, but not so perfect kind of look. And I feel like just the, the circular shape of a turbine with, you know, like the typical thing that you will see, like the like the fan looking thing, uh, propel that you will see uh, sucking the air from the front is just too boring for what, I, for what I have in mind. So having this kind of a really intricate design for me makes it look more interesting. And I, I, I do like this kind of a approach. And also, if I eventually do this on 3D or something like that, I, have, I don't have to worry too much about how that looks, this, that thing is spinning around. This is gonna, to me, this looks way cooler. I can just put some kind of um, light effect on it, on the, on the, um, like on the center of it and make it look like it's working and it doesn't have to be something that is actually moving. And, or I could figure out something else, you know, like that moves differently or whatever or like um, some, some of the parts just um, move uh, in some a different way, you know, like when it's, when the curves, when you're breaking, some of the parts will open or stuff like that, that is not com like um, just traditional looking as a turbine engine that really exists. Um, yeah, right now you can see how I changed the whole shape completely. <laughs> like it doesn't have anything to, to do with what I had before. Um, but I do want it to make uh, that change. I felt like it needed it. And, and now I did, I started adding uh, just a tiny bit of like um, specular lighting and some, some parts that look kind of like scratched and stuff like that, just to see uh, how it could look. Um, also, not everything has to be scratched, maybe just dirty uh, because of the, all the flying and stuff like that. And right now I'm just painting this engine, but it could pretty much be on, uh, on some kind of a workshop, mechanic workshop somewhere, you know, like it's being repaired or whatever. But I just wanted to figure out this design of this engine. Um, <clears throat> obviously, because it's my own project and stuff it will have like it will eventually have I don't know like stickers and like the brand of the of the um, racing team or whatever you know so it will be nice to add some some text here and there but we're not worrying too much about that right now <clears throat> I'm using very very specific colors here um, for some reason, the, the colors from Anakin Skywalker on the pod racing stuff got just extremely stuck in my mind. So that's the color palette that I'm using. I need to kind of get rid of that <laughs> at some point and start using other colors because it's getting really repetitive. Uh, but I do like those colors. Um, adding this kind of like double color kind of thing in some places and some details here and there like openings and stuff like that makes it look more intricate and it's also really easy to do. It's not like super complicated to figure those things out. So I really like to make those kind of um, tiny things on the designs. And this grid is really helping. Like honestly, 
I know that I'm biased because I created it and I'm selling it, but <laughs> it's really, really um, useful once you like you find a purpose for it. Um, just so you know, the product in Gumbro House has 88 uh, perspective grids. Uh, a lot of them could seem repetitive, but it's basically a camera a camera move from left to right that you can kind of um, use different points of view of the same grid. And it's very useful um, in some for some things. Um, but yeah, I really, I really like that I did those uh, because I'm using it. I'm using them more and more. I'm using them for my my work stuff and everything that I'm doing lately I'm, that I'm, that is painted. I'm I'm in the need of having these perspective grids. It really helps down. I know that Photoshop has a perspective function, but I just don't like it that much, and I prefer to do my own perspective grids anyway guys i really hope you like this video uh, thank you very much for watching if you like what you see please give me a thumbs up uh, or just make a comment on the comment sec section and that will really help and if you're interested on the perspective grid just go to gumroad on the links in the description thank you very much